Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Israel Silva, and this is my lovely wife presenting with me. Monica! Monica, well, we're in a four-part series, and this series is called Thou Shall Prosper. Thou Shall Prosper. Amen. You guys received that? Yes. That you are going to prosper. But this lesson is part three of the series, and it's called The Leadership to Prosper. The Leadership to Prosper. We said it was a four-part series. So part one, the vision to prosper. Two, the wisdom to prosper. Three, the leadership to prosper. And four, the generosity to prosper. Now, have you ever wondered why one person can earn $4,000 a week and it looks like they're barely even working? Like, what are you doing? What are they doing? And another person could be doing back breaking work, digging ditches, painting stuff in the hot sun, and they're barely making $400 a week. What's wrong with that picture? What's the difference? The difference is this. The gap in their income is directly related to the gap in their leadership. Say it again. The gap in their income is directly related to the gap in their leadership. Hmm. To find out, we're going to read a scripture that we need, to, we need to learn and understand to prosper through our leadership. That's what we're going we're gonna to touch on right now. We're going to go to this scripture, and I want you on three, you guys to read with me. So one, two, three. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever, wherever you, go. you go. Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 7. Now, in the NIV version, it says that you may be successful wherever you go. I like also the New King James Version because it says that you may prosper wherever you go. And the New Living Translation says that you may be successful in everything that you do. And prospering and being successful is hand in hand. When we are courageous, when we are strong, when we don't turn to the left or to the right, but we stay focused, then we'll be able to prosper. Then we will be successful. There's two major points here in this scripture. We're talking about understanding how to prosper through leadership. First thing here is understand to prosper through leadership that God said to obey the law I gave you. God wants us to be obedient and follow him. Be obedient and follow him. That's the first point. The second point in the scripture is that we have to understand that God is with us. And because he's with us, that's when we can be strong and courageous. And when the opportunity to lead others comes about, we don't run away from that opportunity. We run to that opportunity. And why? Because who's with us? God. God is with us. It's with us. And that's where we can be strong and courageous. Today, we're going to talk about four points. Four points that you can develop your leadership to bring you prosperity. Four points. And the, the first, the four points are this. I'm just going to say these real quickly, then we'll go over them. One, lead yourself. It starts with who? starts with you second point is work as one you mean you have to work with other people you have to work with other people oh, okay number three is the courage to lead i have to have courage too don't be afraid to lead and the fourth one is prosperity through leadership i like that one yes prosperity through leadership now lead yourself in the book thou shalt prosper Rabbi Daniel Lapin, he's the author of that book. He said it, he said it pretty funny. When I, when I read this, it, it stayed with me. He said, it was initial, initially difficult for me to identify who contributed to my defeats. But I was finally able to figure out who contributed to my defeats. Of all the people who I've ever worked with, who ever worked with me, there was one man, one man who 
throughout the whole time, he still served my organization, but he was responsible for every one of my failures. Who was that? Well, Rabbi Daniel Lapin says, if you haven't figured it out, his name is Daniel Lapin. Himself? Himself. In life, you find the most difficult person to lead is yourself. <laughs> so in my day job, I have a day job. You have a day job? Do you have yes. a night job too? This is my night job. <laughs> it's my Sunday morning job. In my day job, I'm a manager of project managers. But long before I was a manager, I was a project manager myself. And running these multi-million dollar projects, there were a lot of deadlines and there were a lot of policies. And a lot of times I had this choice that if I wanted to make my deadline or I wanted to keep my cost under budget, I was gonna have to do certain things. And then there was policies. You ever have these policies in your company that like, if that policy wasn't there, I could, I could get this done. Okay, I can have this done on time. So those are the things that came out. And the thoughts that would run to my mind is that no one's going to check if I don't follow this policy. But Jesus will know? Yes, Jesus always knows. Jesus is always there. And I, but I have these thoughts. You know, you get these thoughts that can run through your head. If I move this money from this project over here that has a lot of money, to this other project that's out of money, no one's gonna really find out. Or these thoughts that come to your mind that said, oh, my boss said it was okay. My boss said it was okay if I don't follow this policy. He said he's gonna take a blind eye to it and not, he's gonna just Ooh, look away. Sounds dangerous. In these moments, one word came to mind. This is the most important word when it comes to leading yourself. That word is integrity. Very good word. Integrity is derived from the Latin word integer, which today in math, we use that for whole numbers. But it means to be whole, it means to be complete. Integrity is being the whole person, and that means being true to yourself. That means being honest with yourself. With me, little me? Yes, with everybody. So I remember when I was a teenager reading Genesis chapter four. That's when I was a teenager, I was reading the Bible. Like I was really learning Genesis, like always a fun chapter. Wow, you're a holy teenager. Yes. Woo. I remember real distinctly, you know, when Cain came and he gave some of his fruit to God as an offering. He, and the Bible says he gave some of his fruit. And then Abel, he had flocks and herds, and he gave the best, the fat, the best, and the first to God. And God looked on favor to Abel and his offering. But Cain, he didn't look on favor with this. And Cain was what? Angry. Oh. He only he gave upset. his leftovers. He was upset because God was favoring Abel. And it was real interesting what he said in Genesis chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7, God said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. God was saying, you must lead yourself. That's what we have to do. We know that sin is always there, but we have to turn away from that evil thought, those things that are going to pull us away, to bring us down. Now, Israel, at his job, you know, a lot of times people are not checking his work, that, you know, he's a project manager of managers, and they have a trust in him. But if and, uh, you know, those things will come out. Eventually, they will come out. We always see stuff in the media that somebody did something 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm like, how did they even remember what they did back then? But nonetheless, it all comes out. 20 years ago, you may ask me, you can't be a judge, <laughs> right? Those things come out. The truth comes out. You know, there's one thing that I remember. Uh, there's a, the, the thing that I want you to take away from this 
if you are true to yourself, you will be true to others. And if you're true to others, you lay the foundation ship, the foundation for leadership. So if you are true to yourself, you will be true to others. And if you're true to others, you lay the foundation for leadership. And when you lead yourself, there's integrity there. Israel recently had uh, one of his uh, uh, subordinates, one of his uh, person contractors, they accused him of doing something wrong with the accounting, overcharging, double charging. There was an accusation. They had to be an investigation. He knew he had done nothing wrong. And guess what the investigation proved? He had done nothing wrong because there was that foundation of integrity. He was leading himself and not only was he able to keep his job in the eyes of everybody in the company, he's ready to be promoted. He's ready to prosper. That's what we do. It's foundational. You know, I tell my project managers today, what I'm telling you is that you must follow policy even when no one's looking. You must follow the law even when no one's looking. I have to stop at the stop sign? Yes. The red light is not a guide. It is a stop. Okay. So if you build, if you do what is right, you'll build trust with others. And if you don't, then you put your future wherever you are, in your company, in your business, at jeopardy, at risk. And that's one of the things that we need to understand. That it, responsibility lies on us. We have to lead ourselves first. We have to set the example for wherever we're going to go, whatever we're going to do in our business in our job, in our company, we lead ourselves first. That is the first thing we have to do to be prospering in our leadership. And now that we have that foundation to be able to lead ourselves, what we want to do is we want to work as one. We want to work in a team as one. I recently read a story in the Thou Shalt Prosper book about a time during World War II in a Nazi camp. And these soldiers were instructed to put these uh, captive Jews into the train to be sent to the next camp so that they could be executed. Now the train was already full and they had some left over. And they said, well, we can't go back to our superior and tell them we didn't put them all in there. And one soldier said to the other soldier, you know what, there's some boats out there at the dock, we'll just drop them off there, nobody will know. The whole thing was for us to get rid of them, we're gonna get rid of them. And that's what they did. They took them to that boat, they brought them down to the bottom of the boat, and they closed the door, saying they're just gonna die. Inside. Dozens and dozens of people in the hull of the ship, they called it the hell of the ship. It was one of those places that's dark, there's rats, is infested it is a place it's a place to go die what do you think the people did they panicked they we're gonna die screaming. we're gonna suffocate we're gonna run out of air ah, ah, ah. and from the back of the boat one person rose up and said gentlemen 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 we can overcome this. We can get out of this place. We can. We must calm down because as they were panicking, guess what? When you're panicking, you're taking up oxygen, right? But if they calm down, they have been left there. So now if they calm down, work together, work as one, they could eventually get out and roll away. There was freedom. They had been set up to be free. But because it seemed like they had been set up to die, as they worked as one, as one person rose up to be a leader and had the courage, and they worked together, it was not their defeat. It was not their death. It was an opportunity to be victorious. And that's what happens when we work as one. 
So when you work as one, you have to realize that there's a common goal that all of you have to do. When you're going to lead others, you don't leave it, lead others with selfish, in, selfish intention. You lead to help everyone, that everyone must gain. So you don't do something like, oh, I start this business so I can make a whole bunch of money. The best businesses that win say that our company, our employees, our partners that are in this with us, we will win together. We will work as one. And when you work as one and everybody's on board and they agree and they're rowing together and they're breathing together and they're in unison, in harmony, there's nothing you can't accomplish. But you have to work as one. That is the key in your job, in your business, in your family, in your relationships. You have to learn to work in harmony with people. And if you can do this, you will go to another level. It'll be another key for you to prosper through leadership. The third key that we have for here is the courage to lead. Courage is not the ability to act without fear. Instead, courage is the, the ability to act in spite of fear. In spite of fear. One of the greatest fears that mankind faces is criticism. Whether you're a teenager wanting to fit in with the group, or you're just an adult giving a speech at the company picnic, or just being in front of all the different executives, there's fear that you're going to be criticized. We, we get criticized from all over. We can get criticized from people we love and people who don't like us. Criticism's always there. You might disappoint mom and dad. You might make a mistake that costs the company thousands. You may make a mistake and sin and be ashamed in front of God. There's criticism there. And sometimes criticism will lead us to what? Say, I'm not going to try that ever again. I'm never going to go try to do business again. I'm never going to do this. We quit on ourselves. It gives us an excuse. And so there's always these fears, the, the fear of death, the fear of old age, the fear of losing the love of someone. There's a lot of fears out there. A lot of fears. It goes on and on and on. I mean, do you think, do I marry her? That's yes. a fear. Yes, I'm a good catch. Do I, I agree, my <laughs> Do I start this business because I have fear I'm going to fail? Do I risk my future? in the, going with this company. There's gonna be fears there. And one of my first major projects that I had, I was called in as a rotating equipment specialist. You know, look at the equipment, check out the specifications, make sure all the equipment is right. Sounds like an exciting job. Yeah. Hey, that's an engineer's dream, right? <laughs> Go out there and specify equipment, pretty easy. And there was two engineering firms on this project, it was a $120 million project. And what I found out pretty quickly, they didn't need a rotating equipment engineering specialist. They needed a leader. They needed someone that was gonna bring these companies together. One was in Houston, one was in Denver, Colorado. There was no leadership. The project manager, he was busy, overwhelmed, and he didn't even like one engineering firm. So he just spent all his time on the other one. And I was brought in as a rotating equipment specialist, but then they said, you can also act as the project engineer. Well, first I find out that these people were not talking, that this project was going down, or it was going a downward spiral. It was gonna fail. There was no way we were gonna meet our budget, our schedule or anything. And they said, you had 18 months to do this project. And I realized at that point, they had to take the courage to lead. I was only 25, 26 years old when, when I was doing this. And they was actually 28 years old. And I had people who were 38, 48, 58, 62 that are above me. And I came in and I talked to the project manager. I said, let me help lead. He says, okay. So I ended up talking to this company. Talking to this. I had big meetings with 15, 30 people in there. And they were like, this guy doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. He's just, He's using his 20s. But what I did know was people. And I understood 
that I had to help people come together to work as one. I had to work with integrity and then had to show them by example what I was trying to accomplish, that we need to do this together. So I was pretty much terrified for being in this big project and knowing that I could be criticized, knowing that I could get fired if I did it wrong. But in spite of the fear, I had to act and I had to step up and lead. So those are the things that we have to do in our own careers, our own business. And sometimes you have the fear of death. I mean, like the, the story in Esther, anybody know that story? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. Now, one of the things about Esther is that Esther was sitting pretty. She was pretty good. She was in the palace. She's, She's having a good queen. time. She's a queen. She gets daily spa days. No, you know, Patty was taken care of. Manny was taken care of. A girl's dream. And so, then guess what? There was a time that came when her uncle Mordecai said, we need you to help us. We need you to step in and speak for us to the king. Now, the king called on her when he wanted to. And he hadn't called on her in 30 days. So she thought, I can't go to the king. He hasn't called on me. He may be mad at me. And if I go before the king and he doesn't wave his scepter at me, guess what? I'm going to be put to death. Off with her head. That's what she said to Mordecai, her uncle. And what did he reply? He said to her, don't think because you're in the king's house, in the king's palace, that you're going to escape from this persecution of the Jews. Deliverance will come somewhere, but you and your family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position where you are today for such a time as this. This is your time to act. Esther had that moment. She had the fear of death, but she had to come and she had to encourage herself. And she replied, go pray and fast for me. I will go to the king. And if I perish, then I perish. But I'm going to do what I think is best. I'm going to take the courage to speak for my family, to speak for my nation, my people. And that's where we're at right now. We have been called for such a time as this. To rise up to that new level of leadership. At this moment, God is asking you, will you go before the king? Will you go before him? Will you rise up to lead those people that need a leader? To shepherd those sheep that need a pastor? It is only through leadership that we can prosper. Now, Esther did go before the king. She didn't perish. She worked up a plan, and she spoke to the king, and she had Haman, the guy who was against them, and he was, he was impaled. He was hung, and she saved her people. She did it. It took a lot of courage, but she was able to do it. You, know, you might be facing a time today when you're trying to achieve your dream. Whatever the fear, fear of criticism, fear of death even, fear of the loss of love with someone, fear that I'm too old to do this, whatever the fear, know that God's telling you that you're called for such a time as this. It's time to follow, follow your calling. It's time to pursue your degree. It's time to go back and get that certification. It's time to start that business. It's, it's time to do what God's called you to achieve your dream. If God be with you, then who dare be against you? Amen. Prosperity comes through leadership is what we've been saying. If you remember one thing, prosperity comes through leadership. If you remember one thing, prosperity comes through? Amen. And that's what we're saying. Many of you know Chick-fil-A. I was there for breakfast and lunch yesterday. Israel said, I feel like chicken tonight. I said, no, honey, I would have been at Chick-fil-A too much. But breakfast and lunch, I was there. Why? 
<laughs> because they're closed on Sunday, right? Yeah. I have thought about buying their meals, freezing it, and then, you know, eating it on Sundays, you know, warming it up. We were there on Saturday because we get there 10 o'clock before the breakfast ends and we can sit at the table and we can get our phone, beep, 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 and now they bring it to your table. I'm like, wow, they're getting better and better in their what? Service. They're getting better in their service. She's. <laughs> we love you! Thank you for working at Chick fil A. We're there at breakfast, and then we're there, and we're working on our message that we're talking about today. And then we stayed there three hours, and next thing, hey, it's time for lunch. Go ahead and do, 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 do. <laughs> And lunch is brought to our table. Now, one of the things is that, you know, many of you know Chick-fil-A started of where? In the food court. Of a mall, usually. Of a mall. There's many restaurants still in food courts that have not branched out. But what have they done? They have brought leadership to the community. They have brought leadership to the restaurant industry. And they're constantly revenue focused. Profit minded. What is gonna bottleneck them from serving more people is their number one question. Who are they looking at the drive-through and the drive-through has this little whole bunch of bars that go these concrete steel beams or bars, right? They're called a uh, pillar or they're called, anyway, these things you can't hit, right? The car can't hit. And guess who walks between there? The Chick-fil-A people. And like, what do they do? Well, they go out there and they go through and they start giving the people their food going two or three cars back. Finding ways to make that line go faster and faster and faster. I've been before and I've been in and out within like three minutes. How do you do that fast? Right? And that's how they find ways to stay profit minded. They tell their employees if you act with, with care, when you say, it's my pleasure to serve you, if we do this together, if we work together to make our customers feel important, that we care about them, that we're here to serve them, guess what? They will come back. They may even have breakfast. And lunch there. You know, they've had the courage to lead. They could have said, oh, there's too many burgers out there in the world. McDonald's has a monopoly. But no, they had the courage to lead. They had the courage to step up and go to another level. They work as one. I'm sorry, but it, it sounds like you guys are robots. Everybody's just together. Yes, ma'am. Pleasure. Yes. You know, but they all work together. Kind of like in the Olympics when they have those swimmers, they're all in unison and they do. This, I forget what that's yes. called. Orchestrated swimming. Synchronized swimming. There it Thank is. you. We have synchronized yes. food delivery. Exactly. But they are profit-minded. They keep focused on what they need to do. Serve, serve, serve. See, really, they're service-minded. And when you serve others, the profit will come. The money, as I've told you in the past, are certificates of appreciation. That's what dollars are. When they give them to you, that means you have served people. Service is equal to money. It's equal to value that you've del delivered to people. And that's what we want you to understand. Prosperity leadership. It's having the leadership to continue to get better. Don't just say, eh, it's good enough. We serve a million people a day. No, we want to serve 10 million a day. How do we get better? How do we deliver? service and excellence how do we serve more people and they have prosperity in mind they know that they can work six days but get a seven day revenue and that's what we need to have in our leadership we will have that level of prosperity but it comes through having that vision having that wisdom staying focused working in a team then we will be able to prosper in our first Two classes we talked about vision and wisdom. This is an application activity. You can take a picture of this or write this down. Vision. Select the idea to prosper. I challenge you all to come up with 40 ideas. Maybe it takes you a week, maybe it takes you a month, maybe it takes you a year. 
Come up with 40 ideas that you want to do, that you're passionate about, that you can make a profit in. Now, Israel, he's like the Energizer Bunny. He's always coming up with a new idea for a business, always a new idea for a business. And I'm like, okay, honey, okay, honey, just put it on the list. Just put it on the list. Is it going to go on top of this or below this? But just well, that, that's list. where wisdom comes in, right? And that's why I have her. <laughs> now, select the idea and plan it with someone who can help, that can ground you that can give you some counsel. They can say, that sounds great, but not everybody's going to like, you know, tuna cakes, right? Tuna cakes? Yes, they might like crab cakes, but who wants tuna cakes, right? I don't know. So, but it might be an idea, right? But someone's going to help you and say, that won't work. And you need someone to do that. You need to plan your idea with wisdom. Today, we're talking about leadership to inspire followers. There's four things we talked about. Lead yourself, be the example, work as one, everyone wins. You win, I win. And this is what we have to do in our idea. We have to look at together, what, can, what is our idea going to do when we lead ourselves, we work as one, and then we take courage and say, God is with us, we can do this. Amen. And the last one we said, act profit-minded. I'm going to change this to say, act service-minded, and the profit will come. Absolutely. So these are the things that we were talking about today. There's still one more key. One more key to have prosperity, to have where it says thou shalt prosper. And that key is the generosity to prosper. And a lot of times people, or we naturally in our mind think, generosity to prosper? What is that about? How is generosity going to prosper me? I know, I know. Have you ever gone to the store and they gave you a free sample? Now, if you liked it enough, what did you do? You bought it. Has someone ever said, hey, free consultation, no, no necessary not to purchase anything. And then you did it, and then what did you do? Purchase their service if you liked it. There is prosperity in your generosity. There's prosperity in helping people. When you do service, Eventually, the value, the, the money, the profit will catch up to you. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. We're it's going to be good. We hope to see you there. Yes. Amen. Amen.